Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. During the Cold War in Romania, a group of looters enters a forbidden area, where a guide indicates they must climb the Carpathian Mountains to reach their destination. After much effort, they find an abandoned church with a special corridor leading to the crypts. Here, the men find beautiful engraved art showing strange winged demons. They heard about a secret cave full of gold, but they can't find an entrance, so they use explosives to blast a hole in the ground. Unfortunately, soon the church starts shaking and the floor collapses, causing the men to fall underground, and a landslide buries the building, keeping the group trapped underneath. At least everyone survived, so they decide to investigate the strange bat-like sound they keep hearing. Thirty years later, a group of scientists begins an excavation at the site where the church used to stand. They find the cave and realize there's a river that extends deep inside it, so they decide to hire a group of specialized explorers to investigate. Meanwhile, in Mexico, Tyler and his team of divers are searching for an underwater cave in Yucatan. They don't have much luck, and most of the team gives up after a while, but Tyler continues until he finds it. He's quite convinced when he returns to the boat, but his brother Jack scolds him because it's important for their safety to stop when the group warns. Later that night, they receive a call from Dr. Nikolai, who wants to hire them to explore the cave beneath the ruins of the church, claiming it extends for over 19 miles, and he wants to document everything. The team, also consisting of Charlie and Strode, finds the job different and risky, but they accept the job. The next day, the team arrives at the excavation site, and as they prepare their equipment, Tyler notices Catherine, one of the scientists. He immediately goes to introduce himself with the intention of flirting, but misses the chance because the cameraman Alex is also there. At least Tyler can show off his diving gear, but his conversation is interrupted when Nikolai introduces Jack to Catherine, and the two immediately hit it off because of their shared interest in cave ecosystems. Jealous Tyler stays behind and he notices Alex taking pictures of something strange, which turns out to be remnants of human clothing they found in the cave. At night, the teams of scientists and explorers gather to review the information they have so far. There's a huge cavern about 300 feet below, which they've dubbed the Titan Room, with a pond that leads to an underwater corridor. They need to find a dry cave somewhere in the system where they can set up camp, and the scientists can collect samples. Because it's so large, they'll be down there for 12 days. Survival expert Top reminds everyone that someone has already died there, so they need to respect the cave and be careful. After the meeting, Nikolai tells Tyler and Catherine the story behind the cave. He tells that the church was built to seal the cave as a demonstration of God's protective power. From what he can understand from the broken art, the knights entered this cave to battle demons. The next morning, the team begins descending through the hole. The Titan Room is absolutely stunning, and the group immediately starts preparing their equipment for exploration. They decide that Briggs will be the first explorer, and he cheerfully jumps into the water, finding a bend ahead after a few minutes of diving. Using his communicator, he warns the others that he may lose connection soon and that he'll call them when he can set up the fiber optics from the other side. While the group waits, Tyler expresses how unhappy he is not to have been chosen because he thinks he's the best explorer on the team, but Jack maintains his decision as a way to punish Tyler for what he did in Mexico. As Briggs continues his exploration, Catherine approaches Tyler and gives him a spider in a tube as a consolation prize, and they bond over both wanting to be the first to discover something no one has ever seen before. The rest of the team starts wondering if they need to send someone after Briggs because he's taking too long, but at that moment Briggs calls and reports that he found the perfect place to set up camp 2.4 miles from the main cave, so he sends the scan he made of the rot with the sonar. Suddenly, Briggs startles when something runs past him, and he catches it to show the team some kind of strange-looking mole. The animal grunts and runs away, but then Briggs goes very pale and says there's something else there. The connection begins to fail, and after a few seconds they lose contact with Briggs. The team blames signal issues and decides to send Tyler and Sonar Specialist Strode to fix the cables while the others explore the tunnel. They are amazed by everything they see around them, including the skeleton of some unknown giant animal. While most of the team stays to study, Jack and Top reach the base and find Briggs' equipment but not the man himself. They call out to him, and Briggs responds from a small opening in the cave wall, where he found old equipment that proves they are not the first humans to visit this place. Meanwhile, Tyler and Strode are working on the cables underwater when they hear a strange noise. 
Strode thinks he saw one of the moles and goes to investigate, finding a new cave and the mole brutally killed on the floor. At the same time Tyler discovers the cables seem to be chewed, Strode is suddenly attacked by a demonic beast. Tyler can hear his screams through the communicator and tries to search for him while the rest of the teams join Jack and Top. Strode fights against the creature's grip, and his respirator floats until it hits the cave walls, instantly bursting and causing a collapse that blocks the entrance. The shockwave from the explosion pushes Tyler to the surface, and he quickly tells the others what happened. Jack and Top go to investigate, only to find the entrance blocked and rocks still falling, so they need to swim back quickly. At the base, Jack informs the team that they are trapped, and no one will consider them missing until the 12th plan days pass. They need to find a way out, but Briggs is nervous about the idea because obviously something attacked Strode. However, Tyler says that Strode probably had a hallucination, and Top agrees that their priority should be to survive. Nikolai thinks the cave is too large to explore, and they would get lost, so the smartest thing would be to wait out these 12 days, but Jack doesn't believe any rescuer in the world would find them because the best ones are down there with them. Later, Jack and Top go to look for an exit while the others rest. Briggs is angry with Tyler for how he downplayed Strode's death and makes nasty insinuations about their breakup, so Tyler punches him. A fight ensues that Charlie needs to break up while reminding them to behave. Catherine uses her time to analyze samples she took from the dead mole and a salamander, and when she shows them to Nikolai, he confirms her suspicions, there is a strange parasite in the cave. Moments later, Jack and Top find an area with bubbling water and signs that more people have been there before. Then they crawl through a very narrow tunnel, only to find their way blocked by a pile of white scorpions. Jack lights a torch to see better and ends up being attacked by a strange beast that tries to carry him away, but Jack manages to cut the creature's claw to free himself. Noticing that Jack's back is badly injured, Top immediately takes him back to base to tend to his wounds. Catherine takes a look at the claw and theorizes that all the animals in the cave used to be the same as those on the surface, but after a long time living down there, they evolved and lost their vision in exchange for sharper smell and hearing. Nikolai thinks they have found a completely new ecosystem, and Alex points out that the claw resembles the demons in the church's art. The scientists also note that the claw has the same parasite inside it. Even with a dangerous creature outside, Nikolai thinks they should wait, but the team agrees they should move forward and find a way out before they get eaten. While exploring the cave, they find a pile of human bones with bite marks, confirming that the beast is a predator. Then they go through the narrow tunnel and reach a fork in the path, so Jack goes ahead to explore. This annoys Briggs because they could just use sonar, but when he checks the path Jack didn't take, the sonar indicates that something moved. Afraid of what might be inside, Briggs swallows his pride and agrees to follow Jack with the others. The group starts climbing up some walls, and Jack shocks Top by saying he can smell water. A moment later, Jack was right and found a river. He throws a flare to check for beasts, and Alex records the whole process. This leaves Jack strangely irritated, so he pushes Alex away and lets the camera fall into the water. Alex questions Jack's attitude, and the words make Jack snap out of his anger, and he apologizes. Later, Jack announces they will rest for 20 minutes and goes to sit alone on a rock while his body trembles in pain. Top sees this from afar and tells Tyler that the medicine isn't working. To Jack's sudden shock, he can hear everything everyone is saying, even if they're not close to him. At that moment, Tyler comes to check on his brother, but Jack swears he's fine and asks him to trust him. After resting, the group returns to the water while Jack continues to hide the pain he still feels. At one point, there's a strong current that pushes them, and the team worries it might make them lost. An irritated Jack argues that this is the only available way out, so the team has no choice but to follow him, even when Alex points out that Jack has a death wish. As the rapids carry the team away, Catherine gets stuck, and Tyler can't help her because the current is in the way. The water pushes Tyler away from the group while Nikolai clings to a rock because he severely hurt his leg when the current pushed him against the cave wall. Eventually, Tyler ends up falling off a waterfall, and Catherine soon follows him, explaining to Tyler that something grabbed her back there. Then Charlie catches up with them and informs them that there's something strange in the water. When Tyler checks, he discovers some strange eels with large teeth. He uses a flare to scare them off, and at that moment, they are contacted by the other three team members, who also light a torch to mark their location. While Tyler and the girls swim towards the others, they hear Nikolai fall from the waterfall too. 
Jack decides to go look for him, but at that moment, they hear Nikolai screaming because something is attacking him. Catherine wants to help him, but Top reminds the group to stay in a circle to protect themselves and wait patiently. Jack follows the blood trail and discovers a huge, horrifying creature carrying Nikolai away, so he follows them. When he resurfaces, he sees the creature carrying a dead Nikolai through a very narrow passage and notices letters tattooed on the creature's hand, meaning that this beast used to be human. Back with the group, Alex feels something moving in the water and starts kicking wildly, which seems to be enough to scare off whatever it was. Jack appears and tells them what happened, making Catherine blame him for Nikolai's death because he never wanted to leave camp. The group continues moving and hears strange sounds that they identify as echolocation, proving the theory that the creatures are nearly blind. Eventually, they find a strong current that seems to be the main flow of water, which should take them out, but they're not sure if it's safe considering the creatures. Jack decides they should start climbing the walls, and Charlie offers to go first, but Jack refuses, saying he and Tyler will handle it. While they prepare the equipment, Catherine tells Tyler that Jack is too sick to lead, which Jack overhears. Charlie takes advantage of their distraction to start climbing first, moving quickly to reach a ledge within minutes. At the top, Charlie feels a draft, and the others prepare to follow her. However, when Charlie looks deeper, she finds a giant bat-like creature growling at her. Charlie immediately retreats and slips off the ledge, causing her to fall and lose consciousness for a few seconds. Fortunately, the rope holds her, and when she wakes up, she finds out the beast is coming after her. The team starts working to lower her, but they won't be fast enough, so Charlie starts swinging her rope while using her flamethrower to keep the beast away. When she gains enough momentum, Charlie cuts the rope and jumps to the adjacent wall, thinking she's finally safe. Unfortunately, the creature can fly and immediately jumps on her to start attacking her, so Charlie tries to defend herself and uses her flamethrower to set the beast on fire. The creature falls dead, but unfortunately, Charlie dies too. After the team retrieves Charlie's body, they realize that Jack looks very different, his pupils are slanted, and his skin is pale. Catherine finally realizes that the parasite entered Jack's body through his wounds, and he's changing like the other animals and people who have been here before. Tyler tries to defend his brother and his decisions, but Catherine, Alex, and Briggs decide not to listen to him anymore and take the main water stream they saw before. Then Jack, Tyler, and Top climb the wall since the corridor is safe now that Charlie killed the creature. Soon they reach a steep, frozen cliff, and Jack decides they need to descend. Tyler slips and barely manages to land on a ledge, but his respirator falls and hits Top, making him slide and hurt his leg. The respirator slides too and punches a hole in an ice wall, revealing another cavern. The trio investigates the area and finds many skeletons in medieval armor, confirming Nikolai's story. Further in, Jack finds daylight under the bubbling water, meaning it's their way out. Suddenly, Jack starts feeling sick again, but he ignores it and tells his friends to go while he looks for the others. Tyler refuses to accept this plan because Jack is clearly sick, which leaves Jack so angry that he almost starts a fight. Top immediately stops him and convinces him that Tyler should be the one to look for the others. Meanwhile, Catherine and the others are preparing to swim, but Briggs hears a creature approaching. He tells his friends to run while he lights a torch, but the beast isn't scared and still attacks him. At the same time, Jack and Top are found by a creature too. They get out of the way before getting hurt, but when the creature flies by, it takes one of their respirators. Back with Tyler, he swims quickly while ignoring the eels. When he resurfaces, he finds his team's equipment covered in blood. Then he hears screams and follows them to find Briggs being taken by the creature. Tyler crawls through the crevice to try to save him, but it's too late, the monster impaled Briggs on the stalactites. Before dying, Briggs tells Tyler that Catherine is deeper in the tunnel and gives him his axe. At that moment, the monster appears, and Tyler starts running through the tunnel, only to find another creature on the other side. Fortunately, he also finds Catherine, who uses the sonar to send strong sound waves that scare the creature because sound is its weakness. The duo escapes together until they find a river, and they jump into it to swim while sharing Tyler's respirator. They have to go through a narrow passage that causes them to lose the respirator, and Catherine loses consciousness, so Tyler has to drag her to the surface. Tyler administers first aid, and Catherine quickly wakes up. At that moment, they hear a strange sound, but it turns out to be Alex, who warns them that the monster is coming after him. 
Tyler finds an ice tunnel and assumes it connects to the cave Jack found earlier, so the trio immediately starts climbing. Moments later, they find the cave with the skeletons and reunite with Jack and Top. The creatures are hanging from the ceiling as if they're waiting for something, which means they need to hurry. They don't have enough respirators even if they share, so Jack decides he'll retrieve what the monster stole. The rest of the group moves towards the water only to slip and drop a respirator, which makes enough noise to attract a creature. Alex uses the sonar to keep the creature away, but it starts breaking stalactites, and they fall on his leg, leaving him injured. Tyler tries to go back to help him, but the monster arrives first and kills Alex. Another creature approaches them through the water, so Top and Catherine try to hide to avoid its echolocation. The creature finds them anyway and won't leave even when Top hits it with the respirator, but Tyler jumps in and kills it with an axe. Meanwhile, Jack flees from a third creature and climbs a wall to retrieve the last respirator, which he reaches after knocking the creature down. More creatures are coming, so Jack throws one of the tanks to his brother and puts a lit flare on the other to throw it into the water later. The tank explodes, and the whole cave starts shaking, distracting all the monsters except one. This creature flies towards Jack, who jumps on it and takes it into the water as a sacrifice to help his friends. Before the cave finishes collapsing, Tyler, Catherine, and Top swim towards the light and finally safely reach the outside. A few days later, in the city, Tyler says goodbye to Top before meeting Catherine at a cafe. He wonders if Jack could have survived out there considering his mutation, but Catherine isn't sure anymore. As she kisses Tyler on the cheek, she explains that she believes the parasite wanted to get out, and Tyler realizes that his pupils are changing like Jack's. Then Catherine leaves, and a terrified Tyler tries to chase after her to stop the parasite from taking over humanity, but he loses her in the crowd.